No one imagined that it was a group of mechanics who had nothing to do with ecology, plants, soil, sand control and other majors that turned the desert into an oasis in a short period of time. What does the vast desert look like? Before 2016, Yi Zhijian, who lived in a mountain city, had almost no intuitive experience. Until that year, he led a scientific research team into Ulaanbaat. Ulaanbaat Desert is one of the eight major deserts in China. In Mongolian, Ulan but means Red Bull. 2,000 years ago, it was still fertile, but now it is a mobile desert where not a single blade of grass grows. In the spring of 2016, he led a scientific research team into the Ulan but desert. Only a few months later, an oasis the size of two football fields appeared in the vast yellow sand. Amidst the lush greenery and the fragrance of melons and fruits, the rebellious Red Bull showed a tame attitude in front of humans for the first time. To the surprise of many people, it was a group of mechanics experts who had nothing to do with ecology, soil, sand control and other majors who created this miracle. According to statistics, China's decertified area accounts for 18% of the entire land area. If this technology is used to transform 1% of China's decertified land, more than 17,300 square kilometers of usable land will be obtained. For E.G. Jin, who controls sand, this is a dream and an opportunity. Hi! Welcome to Hot Topics Time. In today's video, let's take a look at this technology that turns the desert green. In 2009, in the process of studying the mechanics of particulate matter, he found that the transformation of particulate matter from discrete state to rheological state and solid state relies on an omnidirectional integrative constraint relationship. The most common case is soil, which can be converted between a rheological state and a solid state. When exposed to water, the soil turns to mud, and when dry, the soil clumps up. After the desert encounters water, the water will quickly slip away, and it will become discrete after evaporation. If we can find a way to make the sand like soil, there is also an omnidirectional integrative constraint relationship. Then, when the desert encounters water again, the water will not slip away, but will be stored in the in the desert. In this way, deserts can replace soil and become a carrier for plant growth. In 2013, he led the team to develop a plant cellulose adhesive. As long as the plant's cellulose binder and water are added to the desert, the desert can have the same properties as soil. In this way, the desert can store rainfall, nutrients and air, and not only some drought-tolerant plants can grow here, but even crops can survive. In 2016, he and his team started experiments in the desert. When choosing the test site, local leaders recommended Ulan but desert, and said that the conditions there are the most typical and the worst. If even Ulan but desert can be managed well, then other deserts will be a piece of cake. In the spring of 2016, they began to transform 25 mu of desert test fields. By the way, mu, Chinese unit of land measurement that is commonly 666.7 square meters. After three months, many kinds of vegetables actually grow here. In 2019, in the improved desert farmland, the highest yield of sorghum per mu is 932 kilograms, and the average yield per mu is 789 kilograms, which is two to three times the national average. The reason is that the transformed desert has higher looseness than soil, and there is no resistance to root growth, which makes the root system more developed and absorbs more nutrients and water and the temperature difference between day and night in desert areas varies greatly. Therefore, the yield and quality of crops here are higher than those of traditional arable land. From 2017 to 2021, Yi's team conducted experiments in degraded grasslands in other parts of China, the Sahara Desert in Africa and the deserts in the Middle East, turning 20,000 mu of desert into fertile land. Many people may be concerned, does desert farming consume a lot of water? In this regard, Yi's team has also done experiments. They have a 200 mu test field in Ulan but desert. They sowed the seeds of drought-tolerant plants on the test field. After germination, they never irrigated again. Five years later, the plant is still lush, in stark contrast to the surrounding desert. The desert land used for crop production also has a very small demand for water. 
After the transformation, the water consumption per mu of land is less than 400 cubic meters, which is more than 30% less than the local agricultural land irrigation quota standard. Moreover, the cost of the plant's cellulose adhesive developed by Yi's team for transforming the desert is very low. If you want to improve it into farmland, the cost is about 2,000 yuan to 5,000 yuan per mu of land. If it is transformed into land that can meet the growth of drought-tolerant plants, it will cost less money. In addition, it is a one-time investment that will last forever. The desert has become fertile land, and it is not only the local people who benefit. After the local crops are planted in the desert, the roots of the crops can fix the desert, the sand dunes will no longer move, and sandstorms will no longer be formed. After the plants die, the organic matter remains in the desert and slowly becomes soil. Plants are the foundation of the food chain. When plants can survive here, animals also come here one after another, enriching biodiversity. The endless yellow sand in the past will become a green home. Of course, it remains to be verified whether plant cellulose binders can transform deserts to eliminate all deserts on the earth. However, the purpose of their team is not to eliminate all the deserts on the earth. What they want to do is to transform the deserts caused by human causes back into the soil. Among them, if a small part of the desert can be turned into fertile land, it will further guarantee the global food security. So, in those boundless natural deserts, can human beings have a way to transform them? Unfortunately, not yet. Although we do not have the ability to make it green, we can also use it for the benefit of mankind. In 2016, Yee's team disclosed their theoretical innovations and initial test results, which caused some controversy. Since planting crops on the transformed land still needs to be watered, is it not suitable for deserts that are already short of water? Are the materials added polluted? Will the cost of transformation be high, and is it worth promoting? Deserts are an integral part of the natural ecology of the earth, would it be an act of destroying the ecology to turn all deserts into oases? In the face of doubts and even denials, he always believed that their scientific research direction was correct. Over the past six years of field trials, the scientific research team has collected a lot of data to respond to various doubts. At present, the team has obtained 22 invention patent authorizations in China, Australia, Morocco and other countries for various scientific research achievements in technological innovation and production system. Later, his research results were finally recognized. At the questioning meeting, the experts agreed, desert soilization has obvious economic, social, and ecological benefits, is of great significance to national ecological security, food security, etc., provides a reference for global desert governance, and the results have reached the international leading level. Well, thanks for listening. If you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comments section. We'll come back as soon as possible and check them, and then we'll give feedback. See you next time.